Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about professional and realistic drills to improve your round kicks. In today's video, we're gonna break down how to throw a proper round kick. A lot of times we practice our kicks stationary on the bag or with a pad holder. And a lot of times it doesn't really transfer over to our sparring and our fighting. What happens is the round kick is good to practice the technique, but you need to be able to understand a little bit of the movement, the distance, the ranges, and what in particular to work on. Some drills may work on one part of the kick where others work on the other. So the five drills that I'm gonna give you is gonna give you a full spectrum on how to improve the lead cap, the rear calf, your hip, the way you throw combinations, and the way you step. Kicking is just not kicking. There's so many subtleties to the round kick, and that these little tips and these little drills, you're gonna see a big improvement in the way you land them, how effective you land them, and how powerful they are because you're stepping and using the right mechanics to do so. Okay, so let's get right into the first drill. The first drill we're gonna talk about is using our kicks in shadow boxing. A lot of times when we throw our kicks, we have something to stop the round kick. Whether it's a pad, whether it's a bag, whether it's our opponent, we have something to stop the momentum and to bring us back. But that's not always the case when we fight. Fighters are moving. How many times have you watched fights where the fighter misses the round kick and then all of a sudden is out of position and then they get countered and then they get hurt? Right? So that is the kicker's fault because they're not understanding how to control the kick. So by using shadow boxing, you're forced to be able to kick and return to a position. So that's gonna work the hip strength, the hip endurance, so you can constantly be able to throw these kicks, okay? So by throwing these round kicks, you need to understand that there's three different types of recovery positions when you do throw. So even before I throw, I'm thinking about how do I wanna recover? If I know I want to be able to punch after, I have to kick a certain way to to be able to punch. If I'm throwing my kick and falling, I'm not in a position to throw my punches after and I can't throw my combinations. So I need to understand my recovery position so I know what I wanna do after. So the three recovery positions are one, the kick and return. So I'm be able to throw my kick and come back to my stance. Usually this type of kick, you'll get a little bit more of an extension. You want more of the little bit of the snap of the leg. This way you can counter your balance way. If you throw that big tie power way with the big heavy leg, you might fall forward and take yourself out of position. But if your goal is to kick through and break the arms of your opponent, yeah, power style through, go through. But if it's to be able to punch after, you have to make sure you do that kick and return style. Kick, return, this way you can flow with your hands right after. Say, recovery position two is more of that cut down kick. So I come down, I kick, my foot falls down, and then I return back right away. Kick straight back down and I reply, okay? so. Kick, return, cut down, and then return. And then the final way you can do it is literally the spin through. You can kick right through, power your way right through. Those are the finishers. Those that you wanna break and damage anything in its way. Okay, another good way to work this kick and return in the recovery positions is with the single pad drill. You see me talk about it, use it a lot. I mean, especially the head kicks. You can create that power and all of a sudden kick and return and force these different recovery positions. So that's the key to a solid round kick. The second drill that we're gonna work on is the lead calf. When throwing a round kick, a lot of times we tend to be flat on that lead calf. And this is why it's very difficult to counterbalance. So this drill, we're not gonna step. A lot of times I tell you, you need to step. Why do you need to step when you throw a round kick? It's because you need that momentum. By stepping forward, I lengthen my stance, which gives me that power. I can't power kick with a short stance. It's like bunting in baseball. If, if I'm in a short stance, it's like bunting. I don't get that power. But if now I have a full rotation, I get to spin through, this is where I'm gonna get my home runs, right? So understanding the step does get momentum, it gets more power. But we want to break down the round kick, work this particular muscles to help the overall technique. So we're not going to step for drill number two. You're going to stay on the calf. By staying on the calf, it helps you as a counterbalance. By when I throw my knees or anything, by being on my lead calf, I kick, it forces me to fall back down. And now I'm in a position to punch, I'm in a position to block, move my head. I'm structurally sound. I'm not falling out of position. Okay, so up on the lead calf and I want you to work on 
the kicks. And I mean, you can do both sides, round kicks, but ideally, it's about really understanding staying on that lead calf and getting the power through the rear calf. When I step, the momentum comes from the rear calf, but now I have to really fo focus on my rear leg to get that snap and the power. But remember, this drill all about counterbalance. Now, the third drill we're gonna work on is understanding the angle of the kick. Just like our punches, you don't throw your kicks on the same angle all the time. And I always reference the 45 round kick versus your traditional round kick. The 45 round kick is that kick that comes on a 45. If my opponent's hands are up here, the 45 kick is beautiful because I can get right under the elbow and the 45 kick, because I'm not over pivoting, lets me counterbalance, get back to my position and to be able to throw my hands. So I like the 45 kick when I wanna mix my hands and get under those elbows. Then you have that round kick. So that's when you really wanna power through and understand that. So the key that I like to do for these is you'll notice here on that 45 kick, very minimal pivot. And I'm gonna kick and then return back. I am gonna take a small step for this one just to generate that power to get that distance control. Because the key is in any kick, you need to manage that distance. As I kick, I pull my back foot out to keep that space. If I kick and fall back right down, I, I can be countered and be pushed back, which does not look effective. Okay, so I need to understand that I kick, my foot returns right back. And especially when we throw these round kicks, a lot of the return is very slow back. When doing this drill, kick, boom, it's right back down, it's quick, and it's managing our distance. I pull that back foot back because it automatically creates the space between my opponent and I. And when doing this, drill number three, Find the placement of the shin, that is the key. You wanna make sure you find the blade of the sword, especially on that 45, just keep feeling that shin land. It's gonna to toughen your shin, and it also makes you think, um, making sure you attack on the angle. Don't just throw a body kick, a round kick. Find the placement. Are you gonna hit with your shin? Are you gonna hit with your instep? And where and at what angle? So that's the key to drill number three. Now, the fourth drill when working on your round kicks is really making sure you understand the power line. And a lot of times when we strike to set up our kicks, it's with punches. So the classic punch to throw the rear round kick is your lead hand and the jab. So this drill, we're gonna make sure we step in the right direction when we kick. A lot of times when people wanna throw a right round kick, they have a habit of stepping to the right and then when they try to kick, their body gets all crossed and they got no power. If I wanna throw a right round kick, I step and then I need to step out this way because it opens up my hip. If I'm stepping this way to kick in that direction, I'm all over the place. I'm twisted, I'm gonna fall. I got no balance and strength in my footwork. So when I throw my jab, I make sure I'm on the line or slightly outside. And then when I round kick, I'm stepping open to open my hip. This way I can bring my power through my technique. And this is what I call the power line. Okay, too many times when we're punching to kicking in combinations, why it gets messy and gets so confusing is that the footworks travel like this. We want everything in clean lines, jab to round kick. Too many times I see jab, here, here. So the foot's traveling on like an S zigzag pattern. No, clean lines when you're attacking helps you get power, opens up the hip, and biomechanically you're generating as much power and as force as you can in a technical and structured way. Okay, so good clean power line striking for drill number four. The fifth and final drill is a little bit more advanced, but the key to good kicks is setting them up with punches. And this is why it's a realistic training drill. You're not just gonna go in a fight and just throw these kicks. Unless you're fighting someone very basic, you have to be able to set them up with distance, with fainting, with punches. You have to have a setup to land the kicks effectively. Especially if you're trying to hit the body, you have to move the elbow position. So nothing better to move the elbows than with your boxing to set up that 45 versus the round kick. So this drill is more about punches to kick and I've created my own type of flow drill that just reinforces the different types of combinations. A basic way of throwing combinations is always gonna be from the same side. Left jab, right kick, or jab cross, left kick. So they're all in the same type of pattern. But to make it more unorthodox, to make your combinations a little bit more effective, is you wanna kind of throw the same side. I might throw jab to left kick, one, two, right kick. So I do same side combinations, jab to left kick, cross to right kick, and then you just get the volume. So the fifth and final drill is use your punches to be able to set up the different types of kicks, okay? 
The way I like to throw it, it's a basic similar way you can do it. I start with alternating combinations, jab, low kick, one, two, left, one, two, three, low kick, one, two, three, four, switch kick, and then I do same side combinations, jab, left kick, one, two, right kick, so I follow that order. So, plan it out, same side combinations, alternating combinations, punch the kick set. There you go, five different drills to improve your round kick. Remember, it's about being realistic and making them professional style drills. Yes, it's important to sit there and drill the different pad work, um, bag work, but these five different drills make the fight game, the kicking game, a little bit more realistic. You need to kick on angles, you need to set up your kicks, and you need to make sure you're able to defend after your kicks or to be able to move and manage your distance. So five drills, work on them. You can put them as in one workout. There might be one of the five drills you do better than others, and then work on maybe the lead cap, maybe the stationary kicking. So all different things for you to work on regardless of the level you are. Hey, make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Make sure you continue to sponsor Hayabusa by going to HayabusaFight.com and checking out their T3 line as the black and gold colors are my personal favorite. Also, make sure you check out Perfect Sports Nutrition and get 20% off the supplements uh, by using the code Bazooka20 and make sure you check out their pre-workout. I love their glutamine and their branch chain amino acids. So I just posted a video to see how I use my supplements. So make sure you check that out. Thank you for subscribing, liking, keep sharing these videos with your friends and let's keep growing bazooka kickboxing and MMA.